Hello, my name is Martin and this is 3D Printing Iceland. In this video I'm gonna do my initial thoughts on the CR10S printer I got just over a week ago. So let's have a look after the intro. So first I want to state that this printer was bought by myself. I ordered it through a website called Light in the Box and that's a web store similar to AliExpress or Gearbest, it's a similar type, not cheap from China. And I bought this with my own money and Light in the Box or Creality has no effect on this video whatsoever. It's just my own printer. So I did a unboxing assembly video with this printer and from the start I had maybe medium high hopes <laughs> or moderate hopes for this printer to be working out of the box. I've seen a lot of people talk about this printer being a good printer for them and I was hoping this one would also be good from the start for me. But I was unlucky I guess. I had a problem straight from the beginning and I'm gonna talk you through those. So the first problem I encountered, I leveled the bed and when I had done leveling on the corner, I printed this corner test print. I just made this in Fusion 360 just to test how the print would go and this one came out pretty good and I was quite happy. I thought the bed would be level and then I started to print some smaller things and right in the middle the nozzle was very close to the glass even though I put it at a good place on the corners. So what I found that the glass is bent like a bow and it's no good. If I level the bed in a good place for the corners I can't print in the middle and if I adjust it for the middle I can't print on the corners. So this glass that came with the printer is, is unusable, I, I can't use it. For, I can use it for smaller prints in the middle, but I can't use it for big prints that cover the build plate. So this one was a disappointment. I've seen other people talk about this glass not being straight for them, but I try to turn it both ways. Some people have had successes turning it around. I was not able to get it flat for me, it was just unusable. So this was a disappointment. What I did, I put this mirror from IKEA. It's a 30 by 30 centimeter big mirror. Um, it's not as big as a glass plate. I will probably have to make a custom mirror to put on the printer to fully utilize the bolt plate. And um, that was the next thing I tried out. The problem with the clips that hold down the the glass, they interfere with the build volume, so I was unable to print 300 by 300 millimeter square on the glass because of the clips, and if I removed the clips, the glass would move, so I was unable to print the advertised volume of the printer, so that was a disappointment as well. After I got the mirror on, I did, did some prints to check the flatness of the bed and I printed this sheet. This is a just one layer height sheet for the mirror and this one printed out without any special issues. It had a little bit of trouble at this point here. The layers didn't stack together at this point so I'm not sure what's happening there but for most part the sheet is, is okay and, and with the mirror I was uh, able to get a good print and as this is my first Bowden style printer I did some traction settings tests and I was able to get pretty good results on the retractions. I had this test pieces and I found that I could do, go away with 4mm retraction but at 5mm retraction I didn't have any stringing. At 3mm retractions I had quite a lot of stringing so I decided to use 5mm that was the cleanest print and came out pretty good and I didn't have any stringing issues. I then printed out some test pieces and this overhang test came out pretty good and also this resonance test came out pretty good. And I printed out this block with the uh, small cylinders and that came out pretty good as well. And several other test prints like thin walls print and several other default test prints and they were working quite well. This one on the other hand got loose from the bed and I printed this one again and this one got loose from the bed and I didn't know what was happening at this point. And I have several feet of dual bot. That got loose from the bed. Waste mode print that also got loose from the bed. Um, I was starting to see a trend. I could start a print, and, and but after a while, 
the parts got loose and I'm using the magic goo on the print surface and I had, had the pretty good bed adhesion. And I was using magic goo on the print surface and I had good results with magic goo before but for some reason after a while the prints were getting loose and I was getting rather frustrated of field prints. I have quite a number of those dual bot legs and some other prints that I've thrown away that were giving me trouble. Um, but I started to notice when I was starting a print, the heat bed would not heat up. Um, I went on the back side of the printer where the connector for the heat bed goes to the control box. And I moved that a little bit and thought maybe I didn't plug it in properly, but it has a locking mechanism that you turn and lock it in place so it can't really move after you lock it in. But I moved it a little bit and then I printed again and, and got one print going. This one finished without a problem. And this is just this resonance test scaled up. And so I thought I was going to just have a some issue with the connector at this point that I had fixed but after some prints again the, the bed lost current and cooled down in mid print so all prints I did pretty much failed um, at the end I was unable to get a successful print but happened then I checked the connector again and then it was really hot so the connector was burning down and I turned off the printer and, and took apart the connector and it was uh, one of the wires to the heat bed were like all purple and has obviously not been able to withstand the current for the heat bed so this connector was bad and I tried to plug it in again and see if the connector was somewhat bent in the housing or something and it, that didn't work. I tried again and then the printer had an issue with the power supply. The power supply triggered the main safety breaker so it was short to ground the power supply and I had to remove the power supply and measure it out and it was shorter to ground so I couldn't use that power supply. So that's the reason you see a ATX power supply hanging around here. I didn't get a power supply sourced here locally in Iceland yesterday and today is a holiday so I went ahead and connected the ATX power supply. I've connected light in the box that sold me the printer and they will contact Reality and request a new power supply. I sent an email also to Reality and tried to send them a message on the website and got no replies. Also I tried to message them on, on Twitter and got no reply but hopefully the light in the box, the reseller is gonna cover this for me and, and get a new power supply sent to me but nevertheless I want to continue using the printer so I got the ATX power supply hooked up and I will do a separate video on how to connect the ATX power supply to your Creality's CR10 printer so that's a good material maybe for a video but after the power supply replacement and replacing the bed with the glass I still had problems I was starting to print out a dual bot and this failed maybe because of my bad thinking this is a very tall print and as it moves the bed around it start to wobble and then I realized when I'm doing a print like this I would have to slow the printer down quite a bit to reduce the wobble so this one failed, but that is my fault, I would say. It's not the printer's fault. It was stuck to the bed and was working in other regards quite well. So it just started to wobble and, and caught on the nozzle and broke the hand off and was didn't finish the print. So this is purely my mistake, I would say. But I had another problem. <laughs> so as you can see, I've had a lot of problems. Um, I was printing this landscape model. Um, this already has been painted but this one didn't finish and um, what happened at this point in the print the extruded gear came loose from the axle and just moved upwards away from the filament so the extruder stopped extruding so this didn't finish um, this had been printing for 30 hours and had only two hours left when this happened so it was a failed print but I decided to paint it anyways and it's looking good in other aspects of the print it had some of the ringing effects because I was printing probably too fast but other than that it was quite good print and I took apart the 
controller case and <sighs> was checking the power supply. I noticed all the connectors on the power supply, all, both the 220 volt and the 12 volt connectors on the power supply. Connectors here, all of the screws were pretty much loose. I could turn them at least one circle to get the connectors tight. So the assembly of this printer was not in good shape. Also the connector on the MOSFET, I could tighten those quite a bit. All around, all the bolts in the printer were, were at somewhat loose. I would have to tighten up everything. Also, in the beginning, the rails for the for the bed that was wobbling, and I had to tighten the V-slot nuts quite a bit to get the bed stable. And I got it pretty stable, I think. Pretty much everything on the printer from the factory was too loose, and I was quite worried that the mains were so loose. I was almost able to pull the wire out, so I'm not quite happy with the assembly quality of the printer. The printer itself, the extrusions and what I installed together here, that is pretty stable. Uh, there's no wobble in the frame itself. And after I tightened everything down, I got a pretty stable frame, I think. And one thing you might notice, I printed those knobs out to adjust the bed. The small knobs that came with it uh, is quite difficult to reach, especially this one in the back. Uh, when, the, when you're adjusting and the you really have to put your hand behind the printer to get this adjusted. So if you have it against a wall, it's difficult to reach. Uh, but with those printed parts, it is very easy to adjust the bed. So one other issue, <laughs> I have the hot end fan. It is very loud. It rattles. It looks like it's a bad fan from the get-go. It is not normal, just wind noise coming from it. It rattles, so I am gonna replace the fans. Also, the fans in the control box are pretty loud, but they don't rattle at least. But I'm gonna replace all the fans with an Octua fans, and I'm gonna do a video on that. But definitely, the, the hot end fan is broken from the start, and I have to replace those. I have my printer space in the living room, and I can't have a very loud printer running, so I would at least have to replace this rattling fan if I would have the printer running much more. But I'm gonna replace all the fans. So now I've been rambling on for quite some time about what has gone wrong with this printer. I think I got unlucky. I don't think all the Creality CR10s are bad <laughs> printers uh, because there are a lot of people having good success with the printer. I think just my copy of it, especially with the dead power supply, is just a, just a bad luck, I guess. But the assembly on having loose screws, that's something Creality should take, better take care of. It can be quite dangerous to have the mains not tightened properly on the power supply. So that is... Uh, Disappointment. Other than that, the interface is quite clumsy. You know, knob, and if you have watched Devin Mortes' video, you noticed he made a reduction gear to control the knob. When you're like dialing in temperature, it's very difficult to dial in correct temperature because the clicking in the knob won't stop at the one increment. It maybe stops after two or three increments. So it's quite flimsy to use the control. One other thing I noticed is when you heat up for a PLA through the menu, it goes only to 185. So that's a quite low for most filaments. I've had trouble getting filament through the extruder at the temperature. So I have to have manually set the temperature. So the warm up setting is, is quite bad, <laughs> I would say, for most filaments. It should have it 195 or 200 at least. So other things, the belts seem to be properly tightened. I haven't had any issues with those. Like I said, the build quality of the frame seems to be pretty good and I'm quite happy with the dirtiness of the frame. So I think I can make a good printer out of this device, even though I had bad luck in the beginning. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have this ATX power supply for long. If I get a new power supply, I will probably install that back again. But this was just to get the printer started. Um, I probably have to wait a few weeks before I get a replacement from China, depending on how they ship it. But hopefully, Light in the Box will take care of that for me. So, what's next for me on this printer? Uh, I think I'm gonna replace all the fans, and I also got the Bontech extruder to get a stronger extruder. This extruder has been known for not being very stable and I want to replace that. And I've also got in the mail coming to me is the Micro Swiss all metal hot end and the Capricorn tube. So I'm gonna replace that as well. I have printed out this fan mount that I'm gonna install while I put the Noctua fans in. 
I think the, the design of this fan, uh, half of the air is just blowing straight on the hot end. It's not blowing much air on the cooling part of the hot end, just straight on the heat block. So it's not a very good design, I think. Also the part cooling fan, it's not blowing much air. I was trying to sense if I could find some air coming through it and it's very limited air coming out from it. So I'm going to put a 40 millimeter Noctua fan and I actually bought two Noctua fans and might print out a different type that has two part cooling fans and I'll probably try this one first and see if how it goes and then probably at the second part cooling fan at the later stage but I have quite a number of projects coming up for me on this printer. I want to say that when I got this printer I didn't have so high hopes that I would never have to upgrade this printer. It's not a Prusa MK3 machine or, <laughs> or, or Ultimaker or <laughs> something like that. It's a machine that I expected to have to tinker with. I was just having bad luck with the power supply and the connector. Um, I looked up the connector for the heat bed. The Avion connector or Avionics connector, I'm not sure of, of it name the four pin connector that looks like this one used is rated for five amps and i was measuring the resistance on the bed and, and on 12 volts this bed will draw 17 amps so the connector they use are not is not rated for the load of the bed so this is something people have to watch out um, if their connector is getting hot they should replace it I replaced mine with a dean connector and this connector is rated for 30 amps and then the sensor is just a RC type plug so this is the new connector and I'm not going to get the same type of connector that is rated for 5 amps when the bed is drawing 17 amps so that's a design decision they have made to cheap out on the connector and I would recommend people watching carefully if the connector is getting hot and then replace it if it does but at least mine was in bad shape after just a few days of use and was burning down and luckily I was able to find it and, and replace it just the same that the power supply died in the in the process also because there's a new printer and having it breaking down in the first week was quite a disappointment. I had initially thought of doing a review on this printer after maybe one month of use and not upgrading the printer but with those problems I had with the power supply and the extruder and the heated bed and all of the problems I have told you about I'm not able to do a review without, without having to modify the printer so if I would do an honest review I would have to say I can't use this printer it's broken and no good <laughs> and I have to get a new one but luckily I, I can tinker with it and, and get it to work but that would mean the review would be based on a machine that I have modified so I'm not going to do a, a full review of this printer it's it would only say that the printer was broken after one week and it's a piece of crap <laughs> but <laughs> that's uh, maybe just this copy and it's not a piece of crap in general this design I think because a lot of people have had good luck with this printer so just for me it was not working well but I think this is a pretty good overview of my experience so far I will do project videos with this printer and when I replace all the parts I'm going to replace and that is a good material I think for my YouTube channel so in a way it's a good thing it's not perfect out of the box so I'm not really depressed about having to upgrade some parts and, and replace parts but I want to let you know my experience so far in this initial thought video so I think for now I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one